Welcome to You're Cordially Invited, the show that brings you candid and informal interviews with some of the best wedding professionals in the Washington, D.C. metro area. We hope that you enjoy the show, and at the end, we hope that we have inspired you to take these individuals along on your next social affair. You're cordially invited. The video show that brings you candid and intimate conversations with some of the best wedding and event professionals in the Washington, D.C. metro area. Today we're going to talk with a young lady that has a company that really sets the stage for any event. And this is the person that you will go to that announces to everyone that you're having an event and so that they can respond and come and celebrate with you for whatever occasion that you may have. So today, I'd like to welcome Ms. Makia yeah. Pryor <laughs> of Maretta Creations, uh, a very, very fabulous invitation stationery company that's here in the Washington, D.C. metro area. So today, we're going to talk to her about the services that she provides and kind of educate us about how to send an invitation, how to get invitations, the whole nine yards. So welcome. Thank you. So... Tell us a little bit about your company, how it all came to be. <laughs> well, um, Moretta Creations is, is uh, actually an alias I've used since college. Okay. Um, it basically is the first two letters of my name, Makia Renee Taylor. And um, I was a graphic design major at Florida a University. And when I started to plan my own wedding, I could not find anything that fit me. Mm -hmm. And so I had the desire to create my own invitations, but I didn't have the material to. And so I found a local stationer, ordered my own stationery and designed and printed them myself. And once I kind of started doing that, my friends were like, oh my goodness, I love these invitations. Where did you get them? I'm like, well, I kind of made them myself. Oh, can you help me with, why, mm -hmm. you know, with my wedding? And so it kind of turned into a favor, which turned into another favor, which is like, okay, if I'm going to keep doing these favors, <laughs> might as well get paid I for might it. as well restart my company. So in 2010, I restarted um, Moretta Creations with an emphasis in fine invitations. Okay, awesome. And when it comes to the different types of invitations out there, of course, there is mass production invitations and right. then what you do, which is custom. Exactly. Kind of talk to us a little bit and tell people what the difference is. Yes, so mass produced invitations you're going to find in a catalog they're going to flip pages or you can find online where it's basically you just enter in your information and they switch it out maybe switch a picture in and then they mass produce them custom invitations are going to definitely be um, something that's going to be handmade it's going to be tailored to what it is that you desire for your wedding what what tone you want to set what material you you envision being a part of of your day and um the possibilities are absolutely endless. Um, ribbon, paper choices, stationary choices, uh, fonts and typography, anything you can imagine, you can have it exactly your way. Okay, all right. And so you never duplicate anything. Everything is for that specific client, correct? Exactly, and, and I have clients that come because I keep a, a sample or two of each invitation design that I've done. Uh, you know, for the past five years mm -hmm. or so. So some clients will come and they'll say, oh my goodness, I love this, I want it as is. And I'm like, oh, here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really hate duplicating myself. And it's part artist in me that just really wants to create something that, that's custom to that individual, be it just a tweak in the font or, or the, of course, the colors are, are more than likely gonna be different. But every couple has a different vibe. And to try to infuse their personalities into the invitation is really what what makes me enjoy what I do. So um, I may try to steer them, you know, one way or another, mm -hmm. but ultimately I want to make sure that they're happy. Okay, awesome. And when it comes to the different styles of invitations, uh, there's like the pockets and all different types. Kind of yes. walk us through as far as like the styles that are out there. Okay, so there are very, very uh, diverse styles mm -hmm. of invitations. And it all depends on really your budget. 
So a lot of people, they'll, they'll kind of have this vision of what they want, but their budget kind of leans them another way. And some couples definitely want nice invitations, but they just don't want to spend a lot of money because in their mind they go in the trash. And if I may say so, <laughs> a lot of people do tend to keep my invitations. And I hear a lot of people say that they may actually not even get their RSVP cards back because the people didn't want to break up their set. Oh my so goodness. <laughs> that happens. And that's a I'm good thing sorry. for you. <laughs> yes, but not so much for the bride. So in an example like this where you have a pocket invitation and then you're going to have your enclosures on the side in a pocket okay. and um, a lot of people are actually opting to do this method as opposed to the inner and outer envelope which you know we can talk about later but you'll have all of your cards and your accommodations and your directions and then your respond card will be um, in there as well so those are the complaints that I've gotten, those, those cards they haven't gotten back, but it allows it to be one cohesive collective invitation um, that also looks good on display. I know someone that keeps this exact one on their mantle and oh, they don't wow. even know the bride. It was like <laughs> it's been given to their daughter. And um, yeah, so it definitely will, will allow for, for that all in one uh, package. Okay, awesome. Um, another thing that I offer is the addressing service, which you know will have your, your coordinated return address on the back flap, which is where they traditionally go in wedding invitations, and then I custom print your guest address on the front. So that way there's no labels, there's no uh, writing, but the, um, the, the branding is complete with your invitation. Okay. All right, and then what about these types of designs here that you have? These silk box invitations, these are definitely um, for someone with a larger budget. <laughs> I kind of remember this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is definitely for one of your clients, and this one. Um, I don't remember that one too. <laughs> yes, and uh, it basically allows you to be a little more three-dimensional with your design. Um, here you have a, a custom a bride's dress that was made out of ribbon and a lift ribbon that allows all your enclosures to go in the bottom with your invitation on top. So those are, are shipped in um, mailing boxes with tissue packaging. Okay. So postage is also a factor that you have to consider when you select your invitations because yes, you may max out your invitation budget with your design, but that postage may set you over the top. Okay. So you definitely want to um, outline your budget before you start meeting with a stationer. Okay. And then what about the different types of print that are out there? What are the types of prints that um, clients need to be worried, not worried about, but aware of whenever they come in to select their invitations? Aware of, you should definitely know your style. Um, if print is not important to you, laser or digital printing is absolutely fine. The majority of my invitations are of that style, but there's letterpress, there's foil printing, which I do on the, um, the passport invitations that mm. I'm also known for. And um, there's thermography that's like that raised ink mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that you can feel with the texture. And so if printing isn't isn't as important to you, you may want to put that money towards another feature in your invitations, but some people like basic clean cards, no ribbon, no bling, no, no pearls. They just want a nice printed card, okay. and those particularly are a little more concerned with the, the printing style. Okay. Awesome. And what are some of the etiquette rules or things that you would tell brides whenever they get ready to uh, address the invitation? So again, uh, as I was saying earlier, the, the inner outer, outer envelope kind of thing is starting to phase out, I've noticed over the years. Most people just want an outer envelope and they want uh, some sort of pocket or some sort of band that um, contains their, their invitation. So for the outer envelope, you definitely want to make sure there's a Mr. and or Mrs. And uh, married couples always go on one line. Um, Non-married couples will go on separate lines. Children will go on a second line um, below their parents. And um, if there's ever an instance where it's an adult reception only, then you would not put the children's name on the invitation. It is known by etiquette <laughs> that that indicates that the child is not invited, mm -hmm. but what always helps with those situations is giving a follow-up phone call or call ahead and explain to the guests, hey, we're having this wedding, we're not gonna include children under a certain age, you know, we just wanna make sure you have time to find childcare in that instance. Because you shouldn't include something like that on the actual invitation. No children. <laughs> <laughs> you should not, however, 
the way I look at it is you as the bride, you as, as the inviting party know your guests. And if you feel like it's going to be a little more uh, direct or, or indirect, uh, however you word it, however you phase it, you know, these are custom invitations for a reason. So not everything works for everybody. I always err on the side of caution, make sure my guests are aware of what etiquette says, and then leave the decision up to them. Okay. All right. And you talked about some of the trends. What are, um, you talked about the inner and outer envelope is kind of phasing out. What are some other trends that you're seeing in invitations? Wow. Um, definitely just a lot of personalization. Um, you'll have some that'll be a little more humorous. You'll have invitations that'll be a little more creative. Um, I actually have even seen people start to incorporate games and, and, and mm. yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's very creative and it's a way, again, of getting your personality into your invitations. Okay. And when the client gets ready to take their invitations to the postal service, our lovely postal service, what types of instructions do you give them when they're taking their invitations there? So when they actually place their order, um, because I assemble everything and when I give them to my guests, especially if they've gotten the address, uh, addressing service, I will offer to put on the RSVP postage during assembly. So if they bring me the stamps or have them mailed to me, which they can order on USPS.com, and I will, I will apply the stamps so that when they get their invitations, it's packed up, ready to go. All they have to do is lick them, seal them, have one weighed, and apply their postage. So I definitely instruct them to wait until the, the invitations are complete before having one weighed. And once they're weighed, then you can purchase your, your postage in bulk. Um, again, you can also order it if you want the fancy mm -hmm. stamps with the, with the wedding cakes or roses or the wedding rings. You can do that once the invitations are complete put them on, and then have a nice little send-off party. And what's the importance of them weighing one of the invitations ahead of time? Well, if the, if, especially with, with my invitations, you'll have a lot of enclosures and, and thick uh, cardstock that will add to the weight. And so if you buy standard postage and put it on, they're all going to be returned, and you waste it's not gonna be enough. a lot of money. Exactly. Okay. All right. So you hear that. You have to know exactly how much it is. <laughs> How far out should couples purchase their invitations? I believe uh, couples should purchase the invitations definitely in the six month mark um, before their wedding. They wanna definitely, if they're gonna especially work with someone that does custom invitations, they're gonna wanna give them time for the design phase, for the assembly phase, and they're not gonna wanna be in a crunch situation. Okay, and then how far out should they mail the invitations? They should mail invitations between six to eight weeks. Uh, that six mark, six week mark is generally um, for people who sent out, say the dates people know in advance when their wedding is going to be, and so it's more of a formality. Here's your official invitation. Eight week is more, so we didn't send any, any uh, save the date. Mm -hmm. So here it is, you got two months, mark your calendar and let us know if you're coming. If you're doing a destination wedding or something of that nature, you might wanna even back that up to three months. Oh, okay. um, and especially if you're gonna have special instructions about making sure people get their passports and things of that nature, you're gonna wanna either include that in your save the date that goes out, maybe six to eight months, um, and definitely in your invitation sent out a little ahead of that, that six to eight week window. Okay. and then and as far as the RSVP date, how far out should they set that? RSVP dates are generally set about two weeks out. Um, again, it also depends on what type of wedding you're having. Traditionally, your caterer is going to want your final head count between one and two weeks, so you definitely want to get them in within that range so that you have that number for the caterer. And you may also want to give yourself a little cushion to make phone calls if you just you know, haven't heard back from, from stragglers. certain people and you just want to make sure that you're not going to have any surprises at the door. Okay, awesome. And then I know you said to purchase them about six months out. Mm -hmm. Is that the same time period that someone should start working with you? No, oh. um, I would definitely recommend someone start working with me sooner, mainly for budgetary reasons. Um, when you first get engaged and you start planning your, your wedding, you definitely should make it a habit, or I guess not a habit because it should be your own <laughs> wedding. Um, you should definitely get in the habit of collecting estimates. Mm -hmm. So collecting estimates, figuring out what it is that you envision for your day, what's most important to you, and how much you want to allocate to what. So starting 
to work with me up front gives me time to give you an estimate and gives you time to decide, okay, how much is, do I really want that ribbon? Do I really want that buckle on there? Um, and, and definitely not have a, a, a cash strap situation. Okay. So basically, as soon as they find out what that date is, that venue and the color and scheme, the colors. <laughs> they need to be talking to you. Yes, and they also, I also uh, uh, supply a uh, Excel spreadsheet, which is kind of like an address template that I allow people to download from my site because until you know exactly what your address count is, not your guest count, but your address count, how many physical addresses do my party, you know, does my party live in mm -hmm. that I need to make sure uh, get, get, receives an invitation. So you may have 150 guests, but those may only be maybe 110 households. Um, you have couples, you have families that you have to account for. So definitely want to make sure you get that head count before you see me so that I can give you an accurate quote. Awesome. And as far as... <laughs> I've never done this before, but I've had people to ask me about it. As far as sending invitations electronically, how does a stationary person such Touch as yourself, <laughs> <laughs> how does a stationary person, you know, like your caliber, you know, discuss the whole electronic thing? Um, thank God no one has ever asked me about it. I mean, of course, people have joked about it on social media and Facebook, and ultimately, it's your day. You do what you want, <laughs> um, but as a professional stationer and, and as a wedding professional, I, it, it's, it's so far off etiquette, I, I can't even begin to, to start there. Um, an invitation for a wedding is basically asking someone for their most precious gift, which is their time. Mm -hmm. And to reduce that to an electronic form, it's, it's so impersonal that I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> don't do it, just don't do it. Just don't. <laughs> and as far as the electronic invitation, you know, things that are electronic that you want to touch people because of the time that we do live in, uh, discuss the wedding website Absolutely. and what can be placed on the wedding website that's not included in the invitation. Wedding websites are probably one of the biggest gifts to the wedding industry because all those taboo things, you know, do I include this? Do I not include this? Can I put, tell them where I'm registered? All those things are safe and, and, and fair game for your wedding website and should be referenced on your wedding invitation on an enclosure, mm -hmm. not on the main invitation card, but on an enclosure. And that allows um, a lot of communication recommendations for accommodations and can also save you a lot of money because you can refer people to your website and don't necessarily have to include that information in your invitation. So it's less um, other additional things that they have to purchase. Exactly. Okay. And in reference to um, the necessary information that should be included in an invitation suite, what are the necessary things that they should include? Necessary information is basics. Your your the name of the bride and groom, who's doing the inviting, mm -hmm. the place, the time. Um, you can even include the attire if it's going to be black tie or summer chic, however you want to describe that. You can also include your accommodations, but again, that's something that can also go on your website. You're going to want to include directions if it's got a, a tricky you know, location, may not be in GPS, off the beaten path, and you definitely want to include any other special instructions that your guests need to be aware of, that they won't be caught off guard or in an uncomfortable situation because they weren't made aware of it. Um, people with destination weddings may want to include an itinerary so their guests know, okay, they're going to have this event on Friday before the wedding, so I want to make sure I make my, my plane reservations for a little earlier. And if you have a large number of out-of-town guests or a large number of elder guests, mm -hmm. you definitely want to include a lot more information in your formal invitation because they may not be as internet savvy. That is true. Not everyone is on the internet as we, as we would <laughs> think that they are. And what additional services do you provide besides the invitation? Because I see some other things here that are on the table. So kind of discuss as far as when someone comes to you, they're not only just getting the invitations. Right. Um, as a graphic designer by trade, branding is my big thing. So, you know, even though, yes, your invitations are very important, the rest of your what we call branding touch points are as point, important as well. Your escort cards, your your programs, your your gift tags. You know, I have a... Uh, invitation here and we did gift card uh, gift tags bag tags to coordinate with the design and it just kind of makes your guests feel as if 
they were just thought that much of that you went the extra distance to make sure that the details of your day were 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 were, were branded okay. and um I also do engagement party invitations. Oh, Jesus. Um, any kind of favors, favor tags, custom outrunners that coordinate with your brand. Um, I think, uh, let me see, this bride, she actually had her, her logo printed onto a, um, an outrunner, and it, it really just kind of set the tone for her day when people showed up and saw that aisle, okay. rose petals, and then the, the logo that they re recognized from her invitations. So you can do logos for the event, and they can take it and have it printed on, like you said, the aisle runner, or if they have a gobo design that they want done, you can do that also. Yes. Okay, awesome. And as far as... Um, tips or tracking methods for the RSVPs, for those that are, you know, they sent the invitations out now, oh my God, they're coming back in. What are some tips that they need to follow as far as like when the invitations come in, how to easily track them? Um, Excel, Excel, Excel. <laughs> I can't stress the, the uh, usefulness of Excel. Um, definitely keeping track of RSVP cards as they come in. Before they go out, there are brides that are afraid of uh, guests not remembering to write their name on the line and so they'll do numbering on the back. I offer that service as well and we also offer guest management. So with, <laughs> with guest management instead of including you no know, children or things of that nature to make sure that you keep to your head count I will print on your RSVP card um, four seats have been reserved in your honor or two mm. seats have been reserved in your honor. And that's a, a classier way of ensuring that you don't get an Those RSVP additional back people. <laughs> with seven <laughs> and your cousins and aunts are all coming under one person's invitation. Okay, yeah, because that does happen a lot. <laughs> you know, people assume, oh, she invited me, so it's the whole family that's coming. <laughs> exactly. I like that. And as far as... The inner and the outer envelope, you had kind of touched on that a little bit. Yes. Why are there two envelopes? What, what are the purposes for those? Well, historically, the mail was delivered by Pony Express and got very dirty. So the outer envelope was always discarded, you know, upon delivery. So the inner envelope is what kept your invitation pristine and clean for your guests. We don't have Pony Express anymore, but again, we have these 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 uh, traditions that continue. The tissue paper mm -hmm. was to keep from the the ink from from absorbing into the top layer of the invitation. So we don't really use printing presses anymore either, but people still like them for traditional purposes. But functionally, they really have no function. Um, but again, we still maintain those traditions. So your outer envelope is going to maintain the names of the head of the household. The inner envelope is going to have each guest. The outer envelope, if you're only going to have an outer, outer envelope, you definitely need to have the, the additional guests on a second line. Okay, and that's to indicate who is exactly invited being invited. On that invitation, yes. And speaking of our postal service again, um, when the clients take the the invitations there, there's a thing that they offer called hand stamping. Can you explain to the audience as far as what hand stamping is? Um, hand, hand stamping or hand canceling is uh, usually for something that is going to be a little more rigid. It's going to have maybe uh, some, some sort of embellishment that's not going to go through the machine. Um, and so what they'll do is they, they have a surcharge and they will hand stamp your, your invitation so that they don't get damaged um, in transition. Okay. And as far as your services, how do you uh, describe who you are in three words? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, who I am or my company? <laughs> your company. Your company. <laughs> um, my company, definitely custom, um, definitely wow factor, and, um, and personal. Okay. And how do people get in touch with you? Um, people can visit me at www.MarettaCreations.com. Mm -hmm. I'm also on Facebook, and you can follow me on Instagram at Moretta Creations. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today for another segment of You're Cordially Invited. And if you need that special touch, 
to send out your invitations, please get in touch with Ms. Makia of Moretta Creations, and she will definitely set the stage and set the tone for your event. Thank you for joining us, and I'd like to thank those that helped make this day possible. I'd like to thank Frame Magic Productions, DC Rentals, and Shawnee Hayes Makeup. Thank you, and we will see you on another segment of You're Cordially Invited. <laughs>